good to be back, Terry. Rugby league is back. That's still eight weeks till kickoff. <laughs> Hey all, welcome back to another episode of Rugby League Outlaws brought to you by our good friends at Top Sport, onelittlefootyfan.com.au and the Stubby Club. Don't forget to give them some love online. Dan, a well-deserved Christmas break. You look like you enjoyed your Christmas, buddy. Look, I certainly did. I'll work on that in the, the new year, but yeah. later down new the track. New year, new me. That's exactly right. Uh, look, an enforced break, unfortunately. We had so many ideas, Terry. Some great special guests lined up, some really funny gags. Uh, just kept falling through because we kept getting sick, so Sick whatever. holidays. Sick of you. <laughs> he took the words out of my mouth. Anyway, Dan, so much has happened. Heaps. We are going to give you our predictions tonight. But first of all, we're going to talk about some news, some headlines that have happened. The first one, it looks like Stephen Crichton is going to make a switch to the Canterbury Bulldogs in 2024. They want him to be their fullback. Mm -hmm. Like it or hate it. Love it. Hate it. In what regard? He's on a fullback. I think he's a great fullback. Terrible fullback. I think getting him away from Penrith... Makes them considerably easier to beat, which yeah. I love. Yeah. Look, Stephen Crichton is one of the best centres in the game, no doubt about it. He's going to go to Canterbury and just be a really average fullback. He's going to end up back in the centres on disgusting money, ruin Canterbury's cap, which is brilliant. Fine. Yeah, it's a win-win for me. Yeah. I, um, I've i said in years gone by that if Crichton was going to come play fullback for Cronulla, I'm happy. I'm happy for him to play at the Bulldogs. Makes them stronger, gives them a... Because the outside out of car, their back line's not much chop. With the greatest of respects, of course. It hurts Penrith. It's a win-win for me. Yeah, it, look, it, it is a win-win for everyone except Stephen Crichton. Like How do you feel about, though, if it's announced before round one? Don't care. Does it bring back the, do we do this and that to the transfer portal and blah, blah, blah? Well, we signed Oregon Confuci in February last year. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm just asking a question. I'm here to ask questions. No, I don't, I, look, I don't think the NRL can have a transfer window per se. Unless they're going to bring in trades and contracts that Ugh. match or, Yuck. you know, you could have a transfer window. How? Because you don't pay for the, you don't pay the club for the play. You know, you're just you're playing just the contract. So, no, I, look, you can't go back to an anti-tampering because everyone tampers anyway. Yeah. Maybe you can go back to a, you know, you can't announce a deal until May the 1st. Look, fair, fair enough. It is conjecture. It's going to be in every press conference. I think the sooner it's done and announced, the better for everyone to move on. He's the sort of player who's going to go out there and give 100% yeah. every week regardless. He, so, wants the, like, he wants the three-peat. You know, that's what Penrith are talking about this whole preseason. They want the three-peat. They want to make history. Completely fair. Uh, we it better is. get it out of his system before he goes to the Bulldogs. Yeah. Tessie New has made an immediate switch to the... Uh, like it or hate it. Who cares? It's yet another player who has had some good games, but mostly been pretty inconsistent, going without a position to a club that doesn't really seem to have an idea what it's doing. I, I kind of like this move because you're having a look at their centres being like Robert Jennings and Brinko Lee. You and Aitken. Yeah, at least you know now that either one of the Hammer or Tessie New is going to be a centre. Yeah, and look, I think the Hammer has to be fullback. Hammer will be signed fullback. to play fullback. Mm. In terms of Tessie New, the player, really big fan. Mm -hmm. I think he had some great performances for Brisbane. I thought they were better when he was playing. But he never nailed down a position. And the Dolphins, who are coming in without a real identity, let's, let's face it, haven't signed particularly well. They've just added another player on money that he's, you know, he's probably not going to justify in a position that he hasn't nailed down yet. Well, from what I heard and read today is that Tessie wasn't paid much at uh, Brisbane. He's not being paid much at the Dolphins. He's going there for an opportunity. Sounds like he'll be the centre. First crack at fullback is going to be the Hammer. Look, fair enough. And as long as Hammer isn't, because I think his ceiling is way up here. Yeah. Good signing, I suppose. I just... Hmm. It's an okay signing. It's a Dolphins signing. Yeah, it's a Dolphins signing. Uh, the English Super League are trialling a new rule this year, Dan. Uh, if you lay down because you're hurt, mm -hmm. and the video referee deems that there's no foul play and nor are you ruled to go for a head injury assessment, you have to go off for a minimum of three minutes for treatment. Now, we were discussing this beforehand, and mm -hmm. my thinking was you just go off and come back on in three minutes. Mm -hmm. But you're saying you can't be subbed off unless you use an interchange. You can't be subbed off. So if you, if you have to leave the field with an injury, they cannot replace you. So you're down to 12 for three minutes. Big risk. If it's a head injury assessment, then obviously the, the sub goes on. If the referee turns around and says, the video referee, well, we think you're milking it, 
because there's no shots of the face, there's no foul play, there's no crusher, there's no grapple or chicken wing. Yep. You gotta go for three minutes because you need to tell them what your injury was. Don't hate this. Don't hate it at all. Don't hate it It'll at all. It'll stop the milking. Look, it will. And there's always going to be the, oh, yeah, but what if someone is injured? Well, then they're going to have to go off and get something anyway. They're going to have to get anyways. treatment anyway. Yeah. Jeez, it's a risk to stay down, isn't it? Now, yeah. I think we've we've largely moved away from that. There was a time where every single time there was a, oh, you'd, you'd stay down and you'd see the milk. And it was always a penalty. The report thing sort of brought that a little bit, but it snuck back into the game. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, if this goes well in England, I want to see it in the NRL. Well, that's the, that was the, the, the NRL are keeping their eye on it to see how it goes. Tested in reserve grade in England. Yeah, exactly. I, I, think, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. You know, and, if, and, and if within six weeks of the Super League, it's great, bring it straight into the NRL. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm PBL not... loves a mid-season <laughs> yeah. rule. Let's do it. I was going to say, I'm not one for immediate rule changes, but the man in charge is the man to do it. Good on England. I don't yeah. say that often. Now, speaking of England, John Bateman has signed with the West Tigers for four years. Expect to see him back in Wigan for two years, and uh, then they'll get another transfer fee. Do you know Wigan have made more money off John Bateman's transfer fees than they've actually ever paid him? Genius. Great club. In Love in Wigan. Incredible. I am... Uh, I'm torn with this. Full disclosure, I'm a Wigan fan. I'm so sad to see him go. In terms of performances last year... Wasn't that great? Didn't set the world alight. Now, perhaps it's an expectation thing, mm -hmm. and maybe he just didn't live up to my lofty expectations. I don't think he's going to be the player that he was for Canberra. If it goes anything by his performances at the World Cup, the Tigers have got themselves a good player. He was so much better for England than he was for Wigan last year. Yeah, yeah maybe he saw a way out and was like, you know what, here we go. I, I, I think the Tigers have made a great decision. He's a yeah. great player. Again, he's another player that I've had Cronulla in a heartbeat. Paying that big fee, though, puts a lot of pressure on him. So if he doesn't play well, Tigers fans are, you know, they're not the most level-headed bunch. I mean, they yeah. support the Tigers. Well, I mean, they're paying him a hefty salary and they've had to give up $300,000 out of their bank account to get him, apparently. So either or other or... I think it's it's great to have a player like John Bateman back in the NRL and not Agreed. in reserve grade. But this would, if he sees his four years out, it'd be the first contract he's ever seen fully through. So Correct. there is an asterisk, but overall, yeah, I like it. And again, I don't say that often about the Tigers. Uh, the final one, Lachlan Miller has now approached Cronulla for a release. Now, in the preseason, the Newcastle Knights approached Cronulla and said, will you release him? We told him to go away. And then it was put back to Lockie Miller. Well, if you want to go to Newcastle, you need to approach us. He's actually written, uh, him and his manager have put in a written request for a release to Newcastle. We've now gone to Newcastle and said, we want to play in return. We're not just going to release him. We're at a stalemate. Well, it's up to Newcastle whether they want him or not because he's contracted to Cronulla. Yep. Now, with the greatest respects to Lockie Miller, who I still think might be our number one fullback, he hasn't earned the right to say, I want to do this. Whereas if the way Graham said, hey guys, i got a huge offer in England, Cronulla say, best of luck, mate, you've deserved it. Lockie Miller's a player that would be in France right now, playing second division rugby if it wasn't for Craig Fitzgibbon. He saw some highlights and said, let's give this guy a crack. You know, I'm not, I'm not one of these people who's like, oh, we gave you a start, so you owe us for life. But it's a one-year deal. Lockie Miller's, what, 28 or something? So he's got years after. He can go to Newcastle next year to play if Newcastle don't come to the floor. Because Cronulla hold all the pieces in this. Why should we give him up? Now, I saw someone on, online today make a comment that Cronulla have got great depth at fullback. I would argue we don't even have a number one fullback rusted on just yet. Now, I think Kennedy gets a start. I think Dykes is probably number two. So, okay, Miller's number three. But if they started locking Miller in round one, I'm not, I'm not angry. I would be angry if we let him go and we don't get a starting player back. Now, I've heard people, yourself included, say link Tyson Frizzell. I don't know whether that's any true. No. I'd prefer to have a fullback who we could bring in at the drop of a hat and play very well than Tyson Frizzell come in. So he doesn't make our starting 17. I think he's in the top 20. I think Tyson Frizzell is in our, in our team. Who do you, who do you drop? I could, I could easily make a case that Wade Graham would not play if Tyson Frizzell was Fair there. Fair enough. I'm moving Teague Wilton in the starting lineup. Yeah, well, I mean, there's still a bench spot. 
Yeah, I don't think he makes the bench. I just, oh. I haven't seen it. I wouldn't be against it. I wouldn't be against getting Tyson Frizzell here. The the one I am completely against is Lachlan Fitzgibbon. Yeah, the, that's a no for me. That's that bloke, absolute. that bloke's got a once a year ten out. I don't of 10 want game. that nib logo anywhere near us. No, completely fair. <laughs> the other player I've seen linked is Dom Young. That's a trade I would make in a heartbeat. Oh, it's a trade you'd make in a heartbeat, but it's a trade Newcastle aren't stupid enough to make. But he's got a year to go on a contract, and there's talk of him leaving anyways. Yeah, look, he's he's asking for ridiculous money, but let's let's push that aside. There, we hold all the cards yeah. because we have a player that Newcastle want. We can't just bend over and go, "Well, here, I take him for free." Yeah. We'll get something in return. Well, Newcastle don't have many players I want. No, well, and that's the other thing as well. When you've got a, a, a terrible crap, side, a yeah, crap side. There was the, an easy fix to this, mate, six weeks ago. The reason that Lockie Miller wants to go now and not next year is you remember Leon Price. For, played for England, played yeah. for Bradford. Uh, his son, Kai, he's got a hyphenated surname. I don't know what it is, but there's a price in there somewhere. Yeah. Has signed for the Newcastle Knights for 2024 and is a fullback. Ooh, okay, so he wants to go up there and nail the spot there. Look, Lockie Miller's got every right to come and request. Cronulla mm. got every right to say, look, no. no. Yeah. Cronulla have got to get something in return. I would be very disappointed if we let him go without getting... You know, maybe there's a young forward they got who's like two metres tall, 120 kilos, and... Just can't get in the side. Uh, maybe take that punt. Leo Clark. But unless it is, I just no. Nah, go away, Newcastle. <laughs> Jerry, talk to me then. It's time for some New Year's. I miss saying that to you. Look, me too. It's good to see you again. Yeah. It's time for some New Year's. I was going to say predictions, but uh, they're more like spoilers. So Truths. if you don't want to hear what's going to happen in 2023, well, don't turn off. Yeah. But just. Mute us. Mute us for a couple minutes. Yeah. We're going to bring you 10 things that we think slash know are going to happen. Will happen. Will happen. Start us off, Dan. Kick us off. Controversially, mm -hmm. number one, the West Tigers, oh, I can't force myself to say it, to improve. Yeah, look, I'll agree with this. Now, look, it's not hard to improve, seeing as they were so diabolically bad last season, but I think they've recruited exceptionally well, and I think the side, they... I don't know whether they go the eight. Now, we're going to do our full breakdown in weeks come by, so we're going to try not to give that away. I think they'll go close. They have got one of the best forward packs in the competition now. Absolutely. They've got one of the worst back lines in the competition, and they have the worst halfback in the competition, and a 580 thinks he's worth a million dollars when he's not. Uh, their Apart forwards, from that, they're great. Their mm. forwards will bash the crap. Well, they've also got a coach who they sacked 10 years ago, and then he gave himself a job. Uh, their forwards will beat the hell out of teams mm. and get them into great field position. Luke Brooks doesn't have to have the talent to capitalise on that and their backs just don't have the, oh, let's just score a try out of nothing. I think there's still a couple of key pieces of recruitment away. And I think by the time Benji Marshall is their coach, mm. they will be a top eight team. Now, this was supposed to be a positive Tigers thing. It is. A negative, so... They're not going to win the wooden spoon. That's, that's that is, positive. That is a positive West Tigers fan. And I'm positive you won't make the finals again. Be lucky you get that out of us. Yeah. I think that forward pack is gigantic. It yeah. is fantastic. Especially if they had Nathan Brown, who I cannot believe Parramatta are going to let go after losing the talent they have. Good on the West Tigers. Prepare for more wins and losses this year. I think, I think they go about 500, mm -hmm. to, to use a you know very American term. I think it's a good season. Don't get too excited. I think next year, though, yep. you add a piece or two, as you said, good to go. Number two for mine, I think this is going to happen within the next fortnight. Mitch Moses will stay with the Parramatta Eagles. You don't buy that he's going back to... to I don't buy that he's going back there. Now, they're offering him one point whatever million dollars it is, and Mitch has to look at that forward pack and go, that's great. You take my million dollars, where's the investment in the back line? Whereas Mitch has a look at the team that Parramatta have, they've lost some stars, they're about to, as you said, release Nathan Brown, they can go into the player market mm -hmm. with a lot of cash, I think he stays. Well, I think you just scoop Fox Sports and Daily Telegraph, because they're going to have a lot of headlines every time he looks left, oh, he's going to sign with the Tigers. Mm -hmm. I ultimately agree, though, I think, I think he re-signs, and I think it's very, very good for Parramatta, who would have nailed down both their halves. Mm -hmm. Number three, Terry, and I'm here not to make friends, but to make predictions. I think the Dolphins will be every bit as bad as we say they are. See, I don't say the Dolphins are going to be bad. I think, I think the Dolphins are going to surprise some people, right? You know, everyone sort of laughs at the recruitment they have and then turn around and go, oh, but Melbourne lost this player and this player, you know, you've lost. I think, I think they're going to be 
you know, they're not going to be a top eight team, but they're not going to be a bottom four team. Yeah, now, look, well, it's not... It's, it's not in my nature to bag other people's opinions, but seeing Fox Sports say they're going to make the top eight is laughable. Yeah, it's laughable. You can someone screen cut that. Probably Big T, who's got about a thousand gifts for me doing this with the Tigers flag. Never happened, by the way. Put that in your vault. End of the year, they're not making the eight. No, the, for them to make the eight, Hammer has to go nuts. Jeremy Marshall King has to keep that ten weeks of form, and Sean O'Sullivan needs to have a breakout year. Because Anthony Milford's diabolical, their forward pack's really old, and their back line, as we said, they've had to sign Tessie New to get a centre. Plus, nine teams will have to have salary cap scandals because they still won't make the eight. Mm. I think this team is probably better than the worst team in the competition. I'm pretty confident in saying that, but not by much. I think they're going to be very bad. And I say that with no excitement because I want them to do well. Number four for mine, I'm just going to rip the band-aid off Penrith the three, Peyton. They got the side. Mm-hmm. I don't like it at all, but I can't disagree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, I, I'm reading that you know Kick Hour's gone and Appy Chorus Hour's gone. That's fine. They're just going to unearth another beast. Maverick guy is there. Yeah. They signed Luke Garner. Luke Garner's not a bad. They player. signed Zach Hoskins. They've got the guy who won the man of the match in the New South Wales Cup Grand Final, and Sonny Luke to come in and play number nine. You still got Mitch Kenny who starts for mm. them now, and he plays the 20 minutes or whatever it is, they're fantastic. They are fantastic. It hurts me to say that. Probably the Roosters aside, yep. can't see too many sides. Now, look, Nathan Cleary might get injured, yeah, or yeah. it might just be the year where they just they can't get to that level. Things can happen. Mm-hmm. They, they may slide, but even as far as I could see, it's probably third. Yeah. And they could probably win it from and third. The, and too. they win it from third, absolutely. Yeah, no, they're, they're winning the comp for me. You know who isn't winning the comp? Mm-hmm. The team that comes last. Check, check the stats. Check the stats. 100%. If you've come last, 100%, you have never you've won never the comp. You've never won the comp. I think this year's wooden spoon will be won by a team that's never won the wooden spoon before. Now, not to you know, give any spoil, any more spoilers, Terry, because mm-hmm. we'll be back over the next few weeks with a series of you know, 1 to 17. It still feels weird saying that. But I think there's some teams there that have never won the wooden spoon. They'll be very nervous this year. Well, you're giving us the New Zealand Warriors, my pick. The St. George of Laura Dragons, Manly Warringah Seagulls, and the... Mm. And the Adelaide Rams. They've never won one either. Yeah, the Newcastle Rebels. I didn't even know they existed. No, me neither. Thank you, Wikipedia. But yeah, get on one of those four sides. Um, They're coming last. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dan, for my, I'm seeing a lot of love for Ricky Stewart's Raiders. I think they're stagnant. I think they stay around the 8, 9, 10 mark. They might sneak into the finals again. That's it. Now, I'm going to say this with the positive side more than negative. It won't sound it. They're the most average side in the NRL. Oh, yeah. Now, I did a zero tackle everyone's strengths and everyone's weaknesses to go in. Now, 15 out of 17 were really easy. The Dolphins was very difficult to find a strength, full disclosure. Canberra struggled on both. They got a good forward pack. I still think Joseph Tarpany is the best prop in the world. They got a, a good 5'8". There's no real negative there, and there's no real positive. So, yeah, I can't argue with that. I think eighth is about where they're at. They could finish 10th. They could finish 7th. Outside of that, who knows? Yeah, I can't see them making the leap to the top four. Like, I've seen lots of people saying they're they're nailed on for third. They they just hit form at the right time. And and the Broncos, the Broncos, you know, preferably pooed the bed. Mm. Um, No, look, for mine, the Raiders... They stay in the eight, and they don't get a busted storm team in round one to in week one of the final. Sorry, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to pick that plateau. Completely fair. That's uh, yeah, that's a safe prediction. What yeah. isn't safe? Your mate Billy Slater, best fullback to ever play the game. Perhaps yes, is maybe easy. not even perhaps easy. Queensland coach, yep, successful debut at, at the top level. He won't be the Queensland coach at the end of the year. Now, not to say that they won't win Origin because you could field a park side and still beat our bunch of bums, but, you know, Brad Fittler, whoop de doo voodoo doll, Brad Fittler. Big fan, in case you couldn't tell. It's because he'll be coaching the Melbourne Storm in 2024. I agree. I agree. I think that Craig Bellamy has been uh, grooming him as his, pre- uh, his successor. Yep. All along. You know, people turn around saying it was Stephen Kearney, it was Jason Riles. He's always had Billy Slater around his team. That's true. The minute he retired, he was there at training. You know, he's been going and doing those coaching courses. Craig Bellamy publicly endorsed him to take over for the Queensland job, and he's seen what he could do. Mm-hmm. And 
you know, that glimpse of three games, right, along with the name of Billy Slater, going to Melbourne, players, like average players are going to turn around and go, well, Bellamy's still there. He's picked Billy Slater. Billy Slater has won an Origin Series with Tom Dearden in it. Mm -hmm. I'm going there. And he's going to make me better. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree with you. Now, yeah. I can't see Bellamy leaving Melbourne. Even when he was linked with no. Cronulla Heavily, I couldn't see it. No. He'll be He'll Melbourne be the until the day yeah. that he's he's had enough of football. He and Billy Slater, that's a fearsome... With the greatest respects to Benji Marshall and Tim Sheens, I prefer what Melbourne yeah. have coming than what the Tigers do. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, with Billy Slater, probably comes... Cameron Smith somewhere. Yeah, there's going to be some very good players around there. Cooper Cronk's doing pretty good at Fox Sports. What's to say? He doesn't pick up a job on the side. He won't pick up a job with Melbourne if Cameron Smith's there. <laughs> 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 uh, number eight for mine. I'm going to go a controversial one here. Uh, I don't think that Freddie Fittler is going to pick a Saifidi in the Origin team this year. Who's going to pick Matt Lodge? Is it pick Matt Lodge? He's going to pick Matt Lodge. I see why he'd say that controversially. Talent-wise, I, I don't disagree that Lodge probably would have played this year. Should have played this year. If, you know. Now, I don't, I don't know my, if he can my, get past that. My question for you is, mm. how long can you punish a dude that, okay, fair enough what he did was, was gross, but how long can you keep punishing? Like, if we're going to register his contract in the NRL and we're going to pay him a salary and allow him to play... Like, what's stopping him from playing rep football? He's one of the best props in the game. He's better than both those Saifidi twins on any given Sunday. Look, technically nothing is stopping them. Um, I don't think he'll ever play for Australia. I think he could come out and be the best prop in the world and he'll never play for Australia. I think that's a given. I think Mal Meninga's made that very clear. Mm. But Fittler hasn't. That, or if he has, I haven't seen it. Um... I don't know how I'd feel supporting Matt Lodge. Probably not positively. You'd be positive when he ran through the Queensland team and scored a try. I don't disagree with you saying how long can you punish him. Mm. Uh, decisions have been made. People have come back from, you know, I wouldn't say worse, but equally abhorrent. Let's be honest, it was an abhorrent thing. I don't want him playing for New South Wales as a personal opinion. If he was picked, he's picked. Talent-wise, though, cannot disagree with anything you said. You go controversy, I go controversy. Jeremiah Nanai, fantastic debut season. Arguably one of the best debut seasons we've ever seen from especially second row. He's probably going to land himself a million dollar contract next year. Don't think he's worth it. Mm, it's yeah. going to get me some love up north. I think, you, I think you'll bomb out as well. Look, I, I think Jeremiah Nanai is a great talent. I think the, the whole Cowboys team took everyone by surprise. Like... You couldn't, you, you know, you could give me nine seasons or nine predictions of them signing Chad Townsend last year. I was never going to pick them out of the top four, uh, out of the bottom four, sorry. The fact that they got in the top four and then were a game away from the grand final is absolutely amazing. This kid burst onto the scene, got himself an Origin jersey. He's an he, he's, he's Origin winner, mm -hmm. a World Cup winner, and a prelim player. Mm -hmm. Does that suggest he's a million-dollar player? No. No. This year, he's going to come back to earth uh, I think the Cowboys are going to bust their salary cap on him, and I'm happy. Yeah, I think they, they're going to have to, because I think there's some sides that need a big-name signing that are going to come in with more like money. Like the Dragons. The Dragons yep. really want him. Yeah, which is fair. And look, again, I go back to it. If he was signed for Cronulla tomorrow, I'm not disappointed. No. But if I hear he was signed for a million dollars, I'm thinking that money could be better used than a bloke who has played one season, albeit a good one, mm -hmm. in a position where the difference between the top and the middle of that particular position isn't really that, you know, Whereas a fullback or a centre or, a, you know, even a winger these days, the difference between the very top and the rest is humongous. I know, Ronaldo to David Norfoluma. Yeah, there you go, say no more. So I think he's going to get a big contract. I don't know if it's going to be worth it. I can't name a second rower outside perhaps Angus Crichton that's worth a million dollars. Isaiah Papali. Yeah. Only other one. Yeah, look, there, there's, there's two. Dan, I'm going to give our boy some love. Our boy. I'm going to pick Nico Hines. To go back to back in the Dalian. If Cronulla play well, it's going to have to be on the back of Nico Hines. Well, I mean, you know, fingers crossed we've got what they call another soft draw, and he's a media darling. He's the pin up boy, he's the face of it. So, you know, he could be, he could have an absolute shocker, kick a match winning field goal, he's going to get the three points. Fair, completely fair, as, and I would know. As he should. That. As he should. 
I, I, he's got a clear run to the Dally M. Like, so does Ben Hunt, but the Dragons are crap. Yeah, they won't win enough games. The the Panthers, no one from the Panthers is going to win a Dally M. And in saying that, now you watch Nathan Cleary come out and destroy everyone. But, you know, you've got, with Nathan Cleary, you've got Luai, you've got Edwards, you've got Clyde. Yeo. You got Crichton. Um, Too you got, many. You got a whole James Fisher Harris. Too you know. many. Liam Martin is yeah. now. You know he's probably a smoky yeah. for the Dally M. I, um, I hate Panthers. So yeah, I, I hate them as well. I don't think I don't think Sam Walker is going to be good enough to win a Dally M yet, but he's going to be good enough to lead the Roosters. Mm -hmm. I think Joey Manu can win it. I don't think Joey Manu can win it from the centre. Yeah. I don't think Teddy will win it because you've got all those players around taking points from him. Nico Hines has literally got <laughs> no, I himself, think... his good looks, his beautiful hair, and that right boot of his, there's nothing in front of him. He's going to win the Dally M again. He's probably going to three-peat it. Yeah, probably three-peat it. And with the greatest respects to Matt Moylan, you know, your favourite Blake Braley and Will Kennedy slash whoever, yeah. there's not a lot of points being taken off him there. No, someone said to me that Blake Braley would be a smoky for the Dally M, and I was like, there's more chance of me playing Origin. Yeah, <laughs> like, mm. Hey all, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Rugby League Outlaws brought to you by Puncture Media, our good friends at Top Sport, onelittlefootyfan.com.au and the Stubby Club. Don't forget to like and subscribe, give us some love online. Dan and I are back. We are back and we have so much stuff to give away courtesy so much content. of those aforementioned legends. Yeah, we've got so much content coming, we've got so many prizes to give away. Brendan, I promise you that gnome is coming to you. One way or another we'll get it to you this we'll year. We'll drive it up, mate. And Dan, it's not back yet. It's not back yet. But... Rugby League, baby! Oh, yeah.